Two, three, four. Run up your engines! Now Honda Civics can be great little cars, but there's a few things you need to know. I'm going to show you in this 2016 Civic that my customer just bought used. Now this is just a plain Civic, which in this case is a good thing because if you bought the fancier version in this year, you might have problems. Being the base model, it's got the base engine. And as you can see here, it's an Earth Dreams engine. As you can also see up here, a two liter engine. So this is a non-turbocharged two liter. Puts out decent horsepower. Puts out 158 horsepower. That's plenty enough to zoom this little Civic around. If it was the fancier upgraded Civic, it would have the 1.5 liter Earth Dream engines with the turbocharger. Puts out 174 horsepower. More horsepower, but that 1.5 turbo engine is the one that has the problems with oil dilution. The turbocharger in conjunction with the GDI blowing gasoline into the engine oil dilutes it and can cause engine problems. So in this case, buying a cheaper lower end Civic with the non-turbo 2 liter engine, even though you have less horsepower, going to last longer. These do not have oil dilution problems. Now I doubt if my customer knew any of this in the first place, but <laughs> if he didn't know, hey, he pulled the old slot machine and hit a jackpot on this one. And in this case, it's not just the engine, it's a transmission too. This has a CVT transmission. Now the previous year Civics, they had problems with the CVT transmission. The 2014 to 15 Honda Civics and Fits in their CVT transmissions, that seems it's a bit weak, it could break. They did have a fix, which is a software reprogramming to put less strain on it. I mean, really, they should have replaced the shafts, but then they would have had to rebuild all the transmission. There's no way they're gonna go through all that hassle. They did the old software fix. This is 2016. They don't have that problem. Which goes to show that even with a car as well built as a Honda, it's best to do some serious research on a car before you buy it. That's the advantage of buying a used car. This thing is what? It's four years old, so there's history. My brand new car, no history yet, nobody knows. On this, hey, you can learn about the history. Now Honda being a very good engineering company, they fixed the problem with the CVTs in these newer ones. I haven't seen any problem, haven't read any problems with them. They saw a problem and they fixed it. But if you were stuck with the one that had the problem earlier, say you bought a 2015 in 2015, you get the software update fix, but hey, this one's got the real fix. Obviously they're building the shafts better on the newer ones. They learn from their mistakes. Now if this had been the turbo version, I wouldn't have told them to buy it. I would have said, don't buy it. They have oil dilution problems. Or if it had been a 2014 or 15, I would have checked the CVT transmission. I would have said, I don't really advise buying this particular car because the CV transmission had these shaft problems. But this has neither. You're only going to learn that with a little research or of course, just by watching my videos and asking me. I'll tell you the truth. I got nothing to hide. I don't make them. I just fix them. Now going back to this 2016 that my customer just bought, these two liter engines are virtually indestructible as long as you change the oil and filter regularly. I'd use full synthetic oil and I'd change it every 5,000 miles. I wouldn't go to that. Oil's cheap. Engine costs a lot of money. These are well-made engines. Could last a really long time. Don't chance it to save a few bucks. Overall, it's a nice looking car. It's a four door. Got plenty of room for people. Now, as we can see when we go around the car, this is an economy car. And one of the hubcaps has gone very unsightly. <laughs> He definitely needs one of those. But they are pretty good looking hubcaps. Those are just steel wheels with nice looking hubcaps. As you can see, there's the steel wheel without a hubcap. Little car, but it's got a decent trunk. Quite a bit of space in it. Of course, when you flop the seats down, you got even more room. And for a small car, it's got a reasonable amount of space in the back seat. This is the economy version. It's got the cloth seats. It's not leather or anything, but these are nice looking seats. And from my experience, these things hold up a really long time. Just clean them with any kind of cloth cleaning material every once in a while. And when we go inside we can see it's nicely appointed for an economy car the black and chrome is really nice for an economy car you know you really can't argue that got a little stripey on the seats here to make it look a little bit racy and of course it's a honda so you turn the key 
Star Triumph's got a decent digital dash, looks cool. It's got a little bitty console in the middle, nothing fancy. You can upgrade it if you want. Now, the only thing these really have problem with, sometimes the electronic parking brakes get a little bit squirrely on them. I'm not a fan of electronic parking brakes, but that isn't a reason I'd get rid of a car. And for gas mods, of course, it's got the old economy button, so you can get better gas mods. You have a little green on, or you want to drive faster, turn it off and drive faster. Typical Honda. Freezing cold AC. Ah. And it is fun to drive, so we'll take it for a drive. And of course, they all got backup light cameras on them these days. And interestingly enough, I've never seen a backup camera break on a Honda. They're pretty reliable. Now there's nobody around here, so we'll give it a little gas. See how it goes. Not a race car, but it's got decent acceleration. And it really does handle tightly. Handling is a breeze, nice little steering wheel, corner's good. You're gonna feel bumps, it's a Honda Civic, you know? It's not uh, Rolls Royce by any stretch of the imagination, but it does handle quite well. And truthfully, it's a lot smoother riding than the Civic R, which is a race car. And truthfully, it does have very comfortable seats. They are comfy. Plus, they've really seemed to have perfected the CVT transmission in these. Like I said, the earlier ones had chaff problems. This one, no. It's got 50,000 miles on it, still shifts like a dream. And if you do want to drive fast, it's no slouch. This thing has a top end of 125 miles an hour. It's got some zip to it. I just personally find it kind of ironic that the base model has the bigger engine. This has the two liter engine, but the fancy one has the 1.5 turbo engine that like I say, had oil dilution problems. In this case, you're better off with the lower priced one than the higher priced one, which often isn't the case these days. So this 2016 used, hey, this guy picked a gem to buy for a used car. But it does need that rear hubcap that kind of sets the whole thing off wrong. So now you know the truth about a 2016 Honda Civic base model. So you can make a wise choice. Always do a little research like I do before you buy any car. And here's some bonus questions and answers. So Rex Carey says, Scotty, I want to lease a Chrysler. Which one should I get? All right, lease whatever one you want. You're leasing a brand new car. You aren't responsible for anything but oil changes. <laughs> the engine blows up, that's their problem. You know, the wheels fall off, that's their problem. Go ahead and lease whatever you want. Just go buy what you want to pay. I'd never buy one. But if you don't mind paying the lease payment, lease whatever one you lease. It's a new car, if it breaks, it's their problem and not yours. <laughs> Realize releasing a car is one of the dumbest things you could possibly do because all that money is pissed on the toilet. You have no equity. So if you lease a car your entire life, I had a customer that did that and I told him, I said, here's what you spent leasing a car. Here's what I spent buying cars my whole life for 50 years. And let's see, I'm like $200,000 ahead of you. <laughs> <laughs> so, leasing is dumb for economics, but if you do want to get a Chrysler, lease anyone what you want, because you're not going to have to fix it. That's one of the reasons people lease cars. That's why they lease Jaguars, BMWs, Mercedes, Audis, because then they don't have to fix them. Michael Rodner Angel says, Scotty, what do you think of Daihatsu, subsidiary of Toyota? All right, Daihatsu was a failed company in the United States ages ago. They tried selling cars here, and I just laughed my rear end off because one of their cars was called the Daihatsu Charade, and it was a charade of an actual car. But now I see Toyota is uh, linking up with them. And from what I glean, most of that is Asian market that they make tiny micro cars and Toyota selling them and rebranding them as Toyotas in the East. I haven't seen any Daihatsus for sale in the United States that Toyota selling. They're allowing their Toyota name, I guess, to be used in Asia, but I haven't seen them yet in the United States. Those micro cars, another story, micro cars fail in the United States. Smart cars were a dismal failure in the United States. Other people like them in small cities like Paris and London where you can park them. It's a different world. Here in the United States, dismal failures. And when Daihatsu was sold in the United States, they were dismal failures. Michael Williams says, what is the best place to start when restoring a car? Okay, the best place to start is to start all from the beginning and say, do I really want to restore a car? To do it right costs so 
much money. It would make your head. I have had so many customers. I'm going to get this guy. I'm going to restore it. And then three years later, the wife is kicking him in the butt and saying, will you get that clunker out of the driveway or out of the garage? I can't stand looking at that thing anymore. To restore a car correctly costs a fortune. If you want to do it right, you do what's called the frame off restoration. You take the body and the engine and the transmission and the wheels off, do the frame over, put it all together, cost a fortune. It's not worth doing. Now, if you got a car with a solid frame and you want to fix it up and you get the engine and transmission going, you want to put a little body work in it, go ahead. But unless you got a collector's item and you're real serious about it, think twice about restoring a car. Unless it was like your grandfather, your father's car, and he's dead and it's a sentimental thing, you realize how much money you're going to have to put in if you want to. Go right ahead. Just don't jump in the pool without checking how deep the water is first. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.